Howdy folks, thanks for tuning in. Hope y'all doing okay today. So, I have been keeping up on this Rittenhouse trial, and I've got my opinions. And I'm going to keep them to myself on this one. Because, and I, I've seen, like I've aired this out on my personal social media. And the thing I've noticed is that the people that came down on Second Amendment and people siding with, you know, keeping the the property damage and rioters and crime of last summer um, to a minimum, and the people that supported Kyle's actions in August of last year, none of their minds were changed. And on the flip side, there were a ton of people that watched a five-minute newsreel of it before anything was known and made their minds up then, and no amount of evidence is going to change their minds. And I've argued back and forth with people on my personal social media. I'm going to leave it there. I don't think anyone's going to change their mind one way or another. I think that, as an example, if you were on the side of Rittenhouse, uh back in 2020, you see everything that's happening in court, and you think that it just further proves that Rittenhouse was justified in what happened, you think that the prosecutor is being overzealous, you think all the things that these people are thinking and putting on their social media or podcasts or whatever, and on the flip side, you think that everything the defense is saying and Kyle Rittenhouse breaking down on the stand and all the video evidence points to the exact opposite and that Kyle Rittenhouse is as guilty as the day is long and deserves to fry for what he did last summer. I'm not going to say my opinion. It doesn't really matter. It's in the hands of the jury. Anyway, there is one question, legal question that I have about it, this whole trial. Um, today, images came out of the courtroom where, and I forget the prosecutor's name, raked across the jury box with an AR-15 with his finger inside the trigger guard on the trigger. Now, I realize that his assistant, one of the assistant attorneys, someone clerking for him, I don't know, was supposedly, had supposedly checked this weapon before handing it off to the prosecutor. I realize that that's the case right now. I want to be very clear about something. My wife, my father, my mother, my range buddies, the people that I invite over to the house to go target shooting, whether it's clay pigeon, long distance, or handgun. Nobody has ever handed me a weapon that they will say is empty, and I believe them. Every weapon I'm handed, I either treat it as though it is a loaded weapon entirely, or I verify that it is an unloaded weapon in my own hands, and even if you... Even if they pull the slide back, look, yep, that's empty. Okay, let me see. Yep, that is empty, you're right. Because people do make mistakes. And with the responsibility that comes with firearms, I don't trust anyone to not make that mistake. I want to verify it with my own eyes. I've never been handed an empty weapon. And then on top of that, even when I verify a weapon's empty... I don't point it at people for the simple reason that as someone that handles firearms fairly regularly, rule of thumb when I'm not at work, I'm carrying. Rule of thumb. And the only reason I don't carry at work is because they sign my paycheck and they say I can't do that. That's it. Um, but anyway... Anyway, I don't, I always practice proper firearm safety, even with an unloaded weapon, to continually reinforce the habit of never pointing a weapon at somebody. 
this guy broke two of the biggest tenets of firearm safety. Here's where it gets interesting, though. I looked up some Wisconsin law. Now, I understand this was just on my lunch break at work, so I have 30 minutes to eat. I do go to the bathroom when I'm on break, and I like to sit down and relax for a couple minutes before I got to go back to work. So I don't have much time. But in that 30 minutes, I did a little bit of Googling, and I found out that it is a Class H felony, whatever that means, in the state of Wisconsin, to point a firearm at any officer of the law in that state. Now, a question that I legit do not know the answer to is, are jurors considered officers of the state? For the simple reason that they are performing civic duty in fulfilling jury duty. I don't know if they are considered officers of the state or not, but if there are 12 jurors in that box, by my account, that uh, prosecuting attorney could be up on 12 Class H felonies. I can tell you this much. If I'm sitting in that jury box, I am on the phone with law enforcement on my way home and they can review the court tapes and figure out that yes he pointed a weapon at this guy whether he whether it was part of his job or not you don't need to bring an actual weapon into a courtroom and hold it and point it at people you can either get a mock-up reconstructed made out of rubber they make those all the time for training purposes rubber plastic it's uh, mainly to practice your draw, identification, and holster fitting. You can get dummies of anything made up. You could bring the thing in and set it on a stand as Exhibit A. You don't need to handle it to point out that, yes, this is what an AR looks like. You can bring in a picture and say, this is what an AR looks like. You don't need to point it at the jurors. They get it. I was listening to a news anchor podcast, whatever you want to call him, and he said that I would have hit the deck and threw a juror under me if I was in that jury box. If I were in that jury box, I would have interrupted every court proceeding and said, Your Honor, I would like that man placed under arrest because I'm sure he violated a law right there in your courtroom, and I also do not want him handling that weapon right now because he just pointed a weapon at me which violates one of the three biggest tenants of firearm safety. There's a bunch of them, but that's like number one. So, that's what I got to say on this one, folks. Take care. Thanks for tuning in.